Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about this whole hot reload support being dropped from .NET Watch situation and then eventually being merged back into it and I'm going to give you a chronological update on exactly what happened and give you my opinion as we go because even though the problem is technically fixed now it is kind of worrying that we were there in the first place so if you're interested to see what happened, stick around if you like the of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. Now, fun fact, this is the second time I'm filming this video. The first time I filmed it before this was actually merged back in. So this video will be way more positive than that first one. But I will raise some concerns nonetheless. So what happened? Well, three days ago, there was this PR created where Hot Reload support was just removed from .NET Watch. For those of you who don't know, .NET Watch is a CLI tool where you can run your application with and then it monitors for changes and then it would do things like restart your application but with .NET 6 it would also hot reload it meaning you don't have to stop and start your app to apply the changes they would apply on the fly which is pretty nice now this came out of nowhere like we did not know that hot reload support would not be a .NET watch hot reload is a flagship feature of .NET 6 and we would expect that it would stay there so it was very worrying that this happened in the first place and then this conversation in this issue was limited just to collaborators, which is always a red flag. Then this was accompanied with this blog over here, which has been updated since, but the original text was clarifying that they are not releasing Hot Reload as a feature of .NET Watch anymore, and they're investing all the efforts and energy to putting it into Visual Studio 2022, and then eventually Visual Studio for Mac. Leaving Linux and Visual Studio Code and all that without the feature, which then made people assume that, oh, they want to sell more Visual Studio because even though it's free for entry level, enterprise and big companies still have to pay for it. And it's a really good feature. It would make you want to pay for it. Now, Rider, because they got burnt in the past with the debugger situation, they actually implemented it their own way. But any other ID or anyone else who wanted to do it just from the CLI would not be able to use it. Now, around this time, Scott Hanselman tweeted this, just a crying emoji. And we kind of knew that something is off because when people say Microsoft, Microsoft isn't one entity. It's not black or white. It's not bad guys or good guys. Microsoft has thousands of employees around the globe and they're not always on the same page. Like, not everyone in there wants the same thing. And the assumption was that Scott Hanselman, Scott Hunter, David Fowler, Damian, all these faces you know and love were against this. And higher ups wanted this to be a Visual Studio exclusive feature to sell Visual Studio. That was the assumption. Then this issue was created where we were asking why? Why was it removed? And this ended up being the most upvoted issue in the whole repo with so many comments underneath and the common theme is that what the hell we were not expecting this why are you doing this and there was no official response at the time now after that this revert the actual change PR was created and it was at the time basically a joke I don't think anyone actually believed it would be merged but it was created anyway and we started just approving because anyone can approve technically um, a PR here so you can see all these people which approved this PR, which effectively acted as a petition type of form. You know, you approve the PR, you encourage that this should be merged back in. And now you can see that it is merged. So it has a happy ending, but for a couple of days, it was just open. Now in a chain of events, I did not expect The Verge and I think some other outlet as well wrote about the situation. This got pretty big and they actually name drop the executive who they allegedly say that said remove it from .NET Watch, make it Visual Studio exclusive. Now, I'm not going to name anyone because we don't know for a fact what happened. At least I don't know. But you can certainly Google and find out what's going on. After this, we basically had silence. And eventually, Scott Hanselman, a couple of hours ago, said that he was writing something. So everyone kind of assumed that this would be reverted and merged back in. During that time, a very interesting blog also came out and I highly recommend you check it out. It's by Dustin Morris. It's a great read, even though the situation was reverted. It's a good recap of what happened and it explains the rationale behind a lot of things and a lot of his worries 
with the .NET ecosystem on the open source space. Anyway, with all that, I think 30 minutes ago or so, we got a response back from Scott Hunter. We listen and learn Hot Reload is back in .NET. And Scott Hanselman actually said that the PR was merged. Now, this is all great news, but it's worrying that we got here in the first place. What is the next Hot Reload? What is the next .NET Watch? There are other things that if you search, you'll find that are still questionable. They're not as visible because this is a flagship feature of the next release of .NET, but they're there. I'm not going to lie. I am a bit worried. It takes a thousand rights to fix your reputation because historically Microsoft was the bad person. They want you to pay for the tools. They wanted the tools to only run on Windows, blah, blah, blah. You know it. And then for like five or six years or even more now, they've been trying to build the reputation. And dumb moves like this go against that. And trust works in a funny way. You can do a thousand rights, but it doesn't take a thousand wrongs to outbalance it. Even one wrong can break the trust. So who thought that this would go down well? Who did not question this, like more vocally internally, before it became an issue in the first place? What's the next dotted watch? In any case, we now have it back, and there's another blog here from Scott Hunter that explains the situation, apologizing for all that. So it is a happy ending, but it is worrying. You don't eliminate the competition by taking away tools from them so they can't build. In engineering, you eliminate it by having an even playing field that anyone can use the same tools, and whoever builds the best product wins. If Microsoft needs to sell Visual Studio, they have to make Visual Studio better. They don't have to make some features exclusive. That just won't go well. And once you open the floodgates of open source, they won't close back. People will be vocal. All these people in this PR, or every single face, and every other face who you might not see here that was unhappy about this, they won't stand for that. In any case, this is a happy ending, and I want to be positive, but I really hope we don't have to actually deal with a similar situation again. Please, I want .NET to succeed so badly. Don't mess it up. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.